Welcome back at Obermott Stock Investing in Europe. Today we have the Belgium index where we calculated the top 10 stocks based on their financial performance. This is very good news because Belgium is actually very cheap. I'm going to show you how you can see how cheap or expensive a market is on the website. Let's have a look here at the uh, latest stock index research profiles. So you'll find these when you go to markets, index analysis, and when you click on this, you get the latest stock index research profiles, which means what is the overall um, fitting of a certain index compared to the four investment strategies investment strategies that we cover. What is a good value stock? What is a safe, uh, what are safe stocks? What markets have these features the most? So let's have a look at value, which here is uh, on this column. I sort by value uh, and I'm gonna see those markets with the highest value rating. And what you can see here, New Zealand and Australia obviously are not part of Europe. So Belgium is actually the market in Europe with the best value rating. You know, if you look at other markets, you know, it's still Asia, Japan, and then France, also a market where we have bought quite a bit. Now you see something interesting here, Russia. Of course, Russia is also good value, but then Russia has a very different risk profile something that you have to decide yourself. Do you want to invest in Russia just because it is good value? No, I'd feel a lot safer in Belgium. Now, looking at this information and you know, seeing that Belgium is so cheap, I thought there must be news about that. There must be people writing about it. I want to verify that. I checked this out. I Googled, why is the Belgium stock market cheap? And I found MarketWatch, a very good company, and when you click on this, you actually get an article by MarketWatch investing in the world's cheapest stock markets. And I expected to see Belgium. But when I Google, when I search Belgium, it's down here, I see it's actually under the chapter expensive market. So it says the only other stock markets overvalued on the basis of three key valuation measures are Thailand, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, and Belgium. By the way, this is a rather current uh, article about half a year old. It's not that old. So um, a very different message from MarketWatch. How is this possible? Well, MarketWatch did, some, MarketWatch did something very, very wrong. They added up the valuation ratios of the individual companies for each market. Why is that wrong? Well, it not only gives you the valuation ratios of this market, it also gives you actually a reflection of the industries present in this market. Let's just, you know, let's assume we have one market where there are lots of companies in an industry with a very low valuation ratio, and there is another market with a lot of companies with a very high valuation ratio. Now you would assume that the market with the high valuation ratio is the expensive market, but that's only a reflection of the industry. If you have a market where the industry, where the industries are actually typically low valuation ratios, it looks low in value, uh, high in value, or good in value, and vice versa. I went back to Obermott. I went back to the Obermott um, website to have a look if maybe we actually have stocks in Belgium that have typically high valuation ratios. I can find that by using the stock filter. And having used the stock filter, I can then select the company size I want. Let's look just at the large sizes. And I can select the country. That's what I want to do, the country. Select the country, um, you select all, and then select Belgium to have a look. What kind of companies do we have in Belgium? And it turns out we have a multi-line insurance as an extra large company, a brewer, and a food tail retail company. This means these three companies are the large companies in Belgium. They are probably dominating the result um, for that market. Now, when you look at these industries, food rate, retail, brewers, you know, especially food retail is probably also a little bit real estate. Brewing is definitely just um, uh, food retail. So let's Google uh, for price earning ratios by industries. 
and I find here by Stern University, uh, uh, New York Stern University, uh, uh, an Excel spreadsheet actually, uh, a website that has all the valuation ratios for different industries, and an Excel spreadsheet that I downloaded and opened for you here. Okay, this is now open and you know, it's sorted actually by training PE ratios. So you have the industries with like high uh, PE ratios up here and the low PE ratios down here. Now the interesting thing is real estate development comes right at the beginning. So if you have um, a company that is strong in real estate, you know, either development or operation services both have really, really high uh, valuation ratios. If you go for retail, you know, you're a little bit further down here on place 44 out of 104. So it's still better than medium, you know. I mean, the valuation ratio of this industry is still higher than the average. And if you go to look for food, food actually, well, that, that's on 61, grocery and food, we are a little bit above average, uh, below average in the uh, P ratio. So probably when you looked at market watch analysis of the industries, you uh, of the value value of the stock markets, you probably just found markets that have a tilt towards a sector or an industry with high or low, low valuation ratios. A much better way to look at the markets where you know if they're cheap or expensive is actually to go to Obermatt and. Where do I have it? Here I have it. And then actually look at the index research profiles. And here you see really the cheap and the expensive markets. You know, expensive is Indonesia, Mexico, USA, Poland, USA, USA again, and Switzerland as well. So that's also one of the reasons why I'm not currently investing in the US. It's really expensive. I'm not investing a lot in Switzerland, even though I'm a Swiss citizen and know the companies here the best because, you know, in terms of value, the Swiss companies are extremely expensive right now. I feel a lot more comfortable up here where there's better value. So Belgium and then France uh, are definitely European Union companies that make sense to invest in. So this is the reason why I like Belgium. I looked at the Belgium stock index. Where do I have it? Um, here. Uh, looked at the top 10 list that they have. I went all the way down to the combined investment strategy. I look what we have here. I found Tel Hayes, a food retailer. I looked at that website and I found that they're actually mainly present in the US. I'd rather buy food retailers in the US uh, if I want to have exposure to the US market. I'd rather have exposure to Europe. Um, I'm not so fond of multi-sector holdings. This little bug you're probably not even going to see. You want to see a uh, corrected top 10 list once it's published. Uh, I've already invested in telecommunication. Brewers is actually something I would probably like to invest. It is good value, but for some reason they take unbelievable risks and they're not growing at all. Probably the microbrewers are eating away their profits. I looked at the distributor, uh, distributor here. I found when I click on this company that uh, actually uh, the website is quite outdated. You look at that CEO message, summary of the year 2014. I mean, this looks really old. We are now in 2016 and it still speaks of, you know, not even 2015, it speaks of 2014. This is really not a good sign. I don't want to buy there. I already bought Umicore. I'm not so into the post service business. I don't think uh, this is really something for me as a private investor. So what's left is actually uh, Beckert in steel production. I want to have a look at that in more detail. And what I found when I go to Beckert is first of all, the shareholder structure is such that there's a principal shareholder that actually is diminishing in importance over time. And there are a lot of institutionals, you see better here, there are a lot of institutionals. There's retail, institutionals, retail, private bank, I mean, unidentified. I mean, these are all uh, this is a majority owned company by the public. It's something that I like to invest. You know, the principal hopefully has not too much control over it. Sometimes they do with voting shares, 
But you know, this is not really something that speaks against now Beckert from this point of view. I also looked at the business model. Um, I found um, one question that I found really important in which sectors is Becker present? And I like that they're as well in the automotive sector as in the construction sector and energy and utilities. What they do is they're actually doing a very specialized um, uh, uh, steel products. You know, more about Beckert, I also clicked here. And I found um, that they do steel wire transformation and coating technologies. And you know, there's a lot of you know steel, even in tire reinforcement, uh, steel fibers to reinforce five million cubic meters of concrete every year. I mean, they're in construction, they're in the automotive sector. Definitely something that is needed, and probably something that is also needed independent of trends. I like this company. I go to my e-banking account, my dashboard, and uh, I have actually already googled. The easy number for uh, Beckert. It's here. Let's copy that and I search for the stock to buy. I found it. It trades at the moment at 36 euro. I don't want to bore you with the number of stocks I buy. I buy 110. This actually gives me exactly the stocks that I can still afford with this portfolio. And I buy it. Uh, limit, I didn't want to have a limit at market. I don't want to worry too much about you know, my buying process. Um, here, uh, basically, I see the confirmation. Let's go back. Uh, I've placed the order to buy 110 units and it will eventually show up here once I bought it. Yes, that was it with Obermont Stock Investing. We actually complete, completed our first season with buying 20 stocks for 100,000 Swiss francs. Um, it's almost everything invested now. The total value is 96,399 francs right now, so the whole portfolio is invested, and I'll just let it sit now. I'll start with a new season next week. Actually, we're going to invest another 100,000 francs in another 20 European stocks. Thank you very much for being with us in the first season. I hope you got inspired to start your own investing, and I wish you good luck. Goodbye.